What up, guys? It's here, Guild Forever. Gonna do a brief little review for um, um, Common Rider Geats episode twenty. Uh, so yeah, I was gonna get this out like I was gonna get episode twenty out earlier in the week, but I I decided like why the heck not? We're coming up on the week for the new episode, so might as well just wait until that comes out and then just get the, knock them both out at the same time. So yeah, I decided just to wait until episode twenty one. Out, knock them both out in there. I kind of glad I, I I'm kind of glad I did actually because there was a, there was a little trick this the series tried to play toward the end of the episode. They they tried to trick you in the end, making you this making you debate on who was really the, the disaster or however you say it. At first, it made it think it was Sa Sai Sai or Sun wolf girl wolf girl okay at first it made you believe it was her because of how they like planned it especially toward the end of episode but then when we got to the end of ep i mean 20 but then when we got to episode 21 especially the the empire it's been confirmed neon is actually the traitor wow funny thing is she got caught red-handed in the cookie jar Toward the end of the episode, like she, she I mean, she got um, well. No, she was caught when she tried to take out Ace and uh, Kawa with that apple bomb. She was trying to either a get or well, it wasn't necessarily take them out, but she just had to meet her her objective, her secret objective. Apparently, every single time a new mission uh occurs, uh, they're given a new mission to do. So well, that's what ended up happening. What was crazy to me is why the hell did Wolf Girl decided to like make herself look like as the disaster for the sake of Neon? Like, why was that? Why did she sacrifice herself? I guess it's because maybe, in a way, Wolf Girl didn't realize how good she had it till she started seeing it from uh, Neon's perspective. Neon is someone that craves true love, but now I, now I get it. It's not necessarily she wants a lover or anything like that. She just wants real, a real genuine affection and connections with her family, her mother, her father. That's what she wants. She wants genuine connections. Seeing Wolf Girl and her family made her a bit envious. But when Wolf Girl started seeing it from Neon's point, that's when she started thinking like, wow she needs it more than me because like again at least wolf girl had a family that cares and loves her neon's i mean you could say neon's mother cares for her but i feel like it's more of just being overprotective granted this is a dangerous game neon but from the beginning neon's mother has been controlling her every aspect of life and while controlling her life may come off as like manipulative, there probably is some sense of protection in there. Because again, what parent wouldn't want to make sure their child ends up with the best in regards to their future and making sure everything works out for them? I feel like I, I don't think Neon's mother was necessarily a bad mother. She just did about things the wrong way. I feel like her heart was in the right place, but she needed a better way of showing that or better, a better way of doing that. So that's why, um, Neon ultimately has a pretty poor ties. Like he isn't very well, like connected family wise with her mother and father. It's, it seems like majority of the time it's just controlling Neon while at the same time making sure she's set up for a proper future, which I feel like in family, like very profitable family homes, that's to be expected. Like they already have an arranged marriage for her and everything. But that's not what Neon wants. Neon, all she wants is to be given a, a normal life. She wants to fall in love on her own. She wants to, she wants to have her own friends. She wants to have a real genuine like mother care for her and and it, i'm not well at least i'm pretty sure neon does care about her mother it's just 
she wants her mother to show th that same kindness towards her again the issue is is neon's mother only cares about securing her daughter's future and making sure, making sure her daughter is just protected and sheltered i can already tell neon was sheltered at a very young age so the fact that neon is going this hard and going this far for the sake of winning what she desires shows how much drive she has behind it a lot of characters are like that look at what happened with keiwa especially toward the end of episode 19 and it was kind of shown in episode 22 when ne when uh, keiwa took a uh, wolf girl's buckle he took her buckle because he wanted to win and save his family of course you can say saving his family his sister was his key motivation but you can also make the argument for the fact that Kewa just really desires his um wish to be granted. Which I feel like the stakes have really set in motion toward the end bit of this um game. Um But I'm just gonna be honest, I'm pretty sure Ace is gonna win at the end of the day. And again, I know as I stated before, I don't hate Ace, not as much as I used to. But I still think we need to have a new win. So, at this point, I don't even care who it is. It could be Kawa, it could be Neon. I really don't care as long as someone wins. That isn't just eight. But we'll see. Now it seems like there's more mystery shrouding the the sponsors in this death game or this like you know, um, this game to decide to who gets their desired world. Look at the guy that's apparently a huge fan of Ace, giving him everything he needs in order to be able to win. He seems like um, like he could be from the same era as Ace, or Ace at least acknowledges that this isn't his timeline, this isn't his era, which is still a mystery. And then they're talking about that one girl that came out toward the end. I forgot her name, but she's basically Buffa's sponsor. And she desires the goddess of creation or something like that, right? And I'm going off a theory. I'm pretty sure this goddess of creation or what that girl mentioned before. I'm pretty sure that's Ace's mother. I'm almost willing to bet that's Ace's mother. I'm not sure. You guys let me know on that, on your ideas on who the goddess of creation is. I feel like it has to be. Unless it's Sumuri or the advisor for the game. But I'm pretty sure it's Ace's mother. Again, just my theory. The game, ha I mean this game, the series has been throwing me for loops here and there, curveballs here and there. So it could go either way. We'll see. But for now, we just have to wait until we progress further into the story and see what new mysteries are to be uncovered. Honestly, I will say this. It's hard to really tell who is the real villains in the in the series you know what i mean guys hear me out they're the sponsors that are shrouded in mystery we really don't know anything about them their objective where they come from and why is it that some of them are i feel like almost all the sponsors could possibly be common writers or anyone's that's really tied to the game as a game master or close to it but they're very controlling. They want the games to go in accordance to the rules or have it be controlled to where they see fit. Honestly, I feel like the game sponsors are the villains. But at the same time, there's the Yamato, the old man, the people that Buffa is in, uh, aligning himself with, who he's with now. Again, it's hard to say because I don't... Like, in surface level, you would think it's just simply the Yamatos. They're the enemies and the sponsor are just there as spectators. I don't know, though. Because, again, it's really hard to say, like, who are really the villains and who are really the ones that are the... I, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure the good guys, we can all agree, are all the per participating common writers. They're the true, like, protagonists, the heroes of the story. But... I can't really make heads or tails. I feel like both the Yamatos and the sponsors are evil. I don't know. It's just... It's hard to really say right now, but it's fine. We're still only 20 episodes into Kamen Rider Geats. 
not even halfway into the series assuming they go with the 50 episode count like they typically typically do with common rider but yeah it's um it's hard to say we're gonna have to wait and see but other than that i'm enjoy i'm 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 very much so enjoying where the where the series is at right now and i'm very curious to find out the true mysteries relating to the old man the yamados the spawn for me i feel like if anything i'm more interested in what the sponsor's deal is they're very confusing but at the same time they intrigue me especially the guy that ace ace is supporter i don't know like i mean look at what happened at the end of episode 21 he's a common writer looks like a futuristic or some kind of godlike deity common writer but he tried to take out buffa because technically he's been eliminated speaking of, of eliminations are players that are well no oh, actually it's hard to no 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 uh bird boy was disqualified well not disqualified he was voted out he wasn't technically eliminated he was voted out i'm assuming one of the people in team yamato hired him or you know um contact with him and making him join them of course knowing how curious he is he would join however buffa's situation is very odd to me he was actually eliminated in the game yet he still survived how did he cheat at death i mean like how uh, there's got to be something about him that's different i don't know unless someone saved him again it's hard to really say but we kind of already understand the players and like the teams within this given game they're the sponsors the ones that control everything they're the Yamados, I guess you could say the antagonists against the common Rider participants. And then they're the common Riders. They're seen as heroes, but at the same time, they're trying to meet their goals, which is achieve their desired world. A very cluttered uh, group of people, but I'm sure it's going to come full circle and we're going to get some kind of clarification going toward the end of the series we still have a very long road ahead for that which honestly it's fine with me the more the merrier so for now all i can do is wait and see there will come a point where it will they will explain everything i'm certain they give us tidbits here and there but nothing really concrete but i digress it's still good to see I'm not sure if Buffa is ever going to really decide to get out of these team of whack jobs <laughs> in before the Yamados are actually the true protagonists. Watch. Again, it's just, it's so confusing right now that it's, for me, it's very hard to figure out, like, what exactly is going on. I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to piece the puzzle together, but the more I try to piece them together, the more extra pieces I notice fall onto the board. So making it a bit overwhelming but still enjoyable so there's still that don't worry about that guys i'm still having a lot of fun but i'm very curious though i'm very very curious anyway i feel like this is a, co a good point to like uh stop the review let me know your thoughts everyone again links in the description below let me know your thoughts your opinions and yeah what do you think so far do you think uh do you, who do you think is gonna end up with Geats in the final in the final round of the of the tournament or the Grand Prix or the games essentially? Um because again we all know Ace is gonna be at the end of the game. If he's beaten before like the final round, I'll actually be shocked. And if he wins the whole thing, I am not shocked that's to be expected. But once again, we need to have a new winner this time, bro. We really do. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. Peace. I'm out.